process of treating sewage, one of it is extended aeration. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before that, we need to know how and why was it even discovered. Let's head to the history. Extended aeration process is one modification of the activated sludge process which provides biological treatment for the removal of biodegradable organic waste under aerobic condition. The activated sludge process was discovered in 1930 in the United Kingdom by two engineers, Arden and Lockett, conducting the research for the Manchester Corporation Rivers Department at the Wilhelm Sewage Works. The experiment on treating the sewage in a draw and fill reactor, which uh, the precursor to today's sequencing batch reactor, produced a highly treated effluent. Believing that the sludge has been activated in a similar manner to activated carbon, the process was named activated sludge. Not until much later, it was realized that what had actually occurred was a means to concentrate biological organism, decoupling the liquid retention time, ideally low for a compact treatment system, from the solid retention time, ideally fairly high for an influence low in BO5 and ammonia. In the United Kingdom, sanitation became organized on a national level through legislation and establishment of the Royal Commission on Sewage Disposal. Aeration was pursued to address oxygen demand and aeration experiment on a sewage dated back to 1882. The materials form was termed activated sludge. It is by the Arden and Lockett in their April 1914 paper presented to the Manchester Session of the Society of the Chemical Industry. Extended aeration is one of the common biological treatments used in sewage treatment due to its functionality and CBC suspended growth microorganism to break down the weeds. The treatment plant provides the sufficient oxygen, proper environment, and other elements which allow the bacteria to consume the organic matter to live and multiply in the treatment plant. The air may be supplied by mechanical or diffuse aeration to provide oxygen required to sustain the aerobic biological process. By this process, the aerobic bacteria and microbes decompose the sewage into a stable form. But, do we know how it works? Let's dive deep into that. For all that, we need to understand the term aeration, the process by which air is circulated through or mixed with liquid, in this case, sludge. Treatment of sewage plays the most important role to recover some water for reuse. In the short term, it's a process of adding oxygen to sludge or sewage. This thing includes variety of steps in different places, but here are the most common steps and machines used in extended aeration. Most, the raw sewage initially enters in the inlet chamber whereby it removes solid particles such as roots, rags, and rocks. There are other machines that is used to screen large solid particles such as plastics. Next, we have a grid removal. The grid removal is responsible for removing smaller fine particles. Waste and very light particles, along with oil and grease, are stopped in the grit and grease chamber. It separates the solid from the liquid. We have primary and secondary clarifier. A primary clarifier is responsible to slow the velocity of the wastewater before it enters to the aeration tank. Standard aeration has the most important tank called the aeration tank itself. It has four important uh, components whereby it has anoxic tank, aerobic tank, second aerobic tank, and also the final tank. Anoxic tank is responsible for the denitrification process whereby it converts or breaks down nitrogen. In the aerobic tank, a uh, complete nitrification process takes place whereby ammonium nitrogen converts to nitrites and then to nitrate. Non-recycled nitrates are then reduced by indigenous respiration of bacteria. And last but not least, the final tank actually prevents further denitrification process. Wastewater entering the aeration basin still contains organic matter such as food waste and fecal. Microorganisms in the raw water influent will colonize in the aeration tank 
and metabolize organic waste. As the microorganisms need oxygen to survive, the tank is aerated for example with diffuser system. The amount of oxygen needed for biochemical processes is also known as BOD value. BOD is a very important indicator for the level of wastewater pollution. Screen treated effluent then enters the secondary clarifier for the separation of sludge and water. However, sludge and some of the water particles may be at the bottom of the clarifier, hence it's, it is then recycled back to the treatment zone. But wait, when the water goes back to the recycled treatment zone, where does the sludge go? The sludge enters through sludge palm and makes its way through the sludge thickener whereby it is responsible to filtrate back to aeration or either goes to sludge drying beds. Wondering how sludge drying beds look like? Well, here you go. Hence, the purpose of aeration is to reduce the amount of organic matter and the number of disease-causing microorganisms present in the sludge. There are few advantages and disadvantages of extended aeration system. The first advantage is extended aeration processes can be effective at managing organic loading and flow fluctuations since there is a longer detention period for nutrients to be assimilated by bacteria. Second, system are odorless can be installed in a variety of places have a minimal footprint and, and can be landscaped in to match in with the surroundings. Third, extended aeration system will have a relatively low sludge yield due to long sludge ages can be designed to provide nitrification and do not require primary clarifier. The disadvantages of extended aeration is a longer aeration period requires more energy Second, extended aeration plants cannot achieve denitrification and phosphorus removal without additional unit processes. Third, higher aeration requirements due to typically long solid retention time. As a conclusion, the extended aeration process is a complete mixed system and provides biological treatment for the removal of biodegradable organic waste under aerobic conditions. The treatment system provides the proper environment, sufficient oxygen and other suitable environment which allows the bacteria to consume the organic matters and multiply within the treatment plant. That's all from us, Group 9, about the extended aeration system. <laughs>